Uh, we'll hear from Lucian on Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, and Kevlin. Hello, everyone. Lucian. Um, while I was preparing for my talk uh, tomorrow on threading, I realized that I, I didn't have any quotes from any, any of the philosophers, so I thought I, I would fix that. So um, I actually, uh, well, what I wanted to, uh, I started uh, this uh, sliding talk from uh, a quote that uh, Kevin was, was saying in his uh, yesterday keynote, I know that I know nothing. Like, what do you mean, Kevin? You know a lot of stuff. What do you mean you know nothing? And actually, Socrates, if we go back, said, uh, I know nothing except the fact of my ignorance. And uh, the problem with that is um, he, he just wandered around Athens and just trying to ask people, what do they know to try to get some knowledge? And that didn't turn out quite well. He, he was tried and found guilty of corrupting the minds of the youth. And then, yeah, kind of from that point on, Plato took over and the philosophy became like corrupting the mind of people. Uh, so yeah, Plato, uh, ignorance is the root and stem of, the, of all evil. So sorry, Gnuth, that quote uh, is subclassed. Um, and yeah, he, he just be, became the inventor of philosophy. Then came Aristotle, Aristotle was wise, probably the most influential figure in Western philosophy but this definitely got it wrong. The other one, knowledge of the fact difference um, from knowledge of the reason of the fact. That's, that's pretty interesting. So studies sound deep. The premises must be in the cause and the conclusion more knowable than it and prior to it. So actually Aristotle invented logic. We think that logic is something like uh, very, very easy, but that, that came from, from Aristotle. And then let's, let's get back to Kevlin. Oh, he mentioned this uh, in several of his talks. And since I saw it, I just like, yeah, I need to go back to my company and just tell everybody, hey, this is how you need to do. You have to write uh, simple testing because it prevents most critical failures, right? And I went and looked at the article and said, majority, the majority of production failures can be reproduced by unit tests. Then I was like, wait, that's not right. Reproduction failures cannot prevent bugs. It's not prior to it. So that, that my brain is just like, oh my God, this is not, uh, this is not something that we need to do. And here, here's an example. I have a perfectly buggy sort algorithm that works fine most of the time and it just uh, fails for one multiple cases when the length is of a, of the, uh, for particular size. It's very easy to spot the error once you have it in production. But it's hard to do before that. So then I, I left wondering like how effective unit tests are. That's, that's the problem that Kevin keeps messing up with my head. This, this becomes an obsession of mine. Then it starts away with uh, two years ago, a knowledge acquisition. Software engineering is knowledge acquisition. It's applied epistemology. Like, how can we sleep at night knowing that's what do we do on a daily basis? It's applied uh, epistemology that just messes up completely with your brain. So what do we know actually? Well, we don't know anything, right? That's why we keep fighting for uh, more than 2000 years. We have no idea what we know. We kind of know that we do not think. And again, in his last keynote, uh, Kevin was talking about S programs, P programs, and E programs. And I thought, yeah, I heard this before. I know how it goes. But then it just drops it. Like S programs are not composable. I spent the last three months thinking about composability and decomposability of threads. And like, this is mainly a solved problem in computer engineering. But then Kevin comes along and says, no, they're not composable. Actually, what is composable if simple S programs are? Kind of nothing, right? So that's my problem. Kevin keeps corrupting our minds. Luckily for us, we don't just execute people for doing that nowadays. And by the way, locks provide exclusive access to evil and raw threads should die. Thank you very much.